Hello, this is a beginner tutorial for the types language, which is like a LaTeX alternative. If you're looking to do math homework or write any kind of scientific paper or something, um, and you don't like LaTeX or you just want to learn types in general, this is a uh, basics of it. Uh, you can follow along by going to typesd.app. It'll probably prompt you to sign in, but then you'll get like a little editor window next to um, next to your your document preview, and you should just be able to start typing and it should be good to go. I'm going to use my own uh, local setup just because I'm used to it, but the process will be pretty much the same. So the very basics are you can just start typing um, any kind of, if I just start typing in letters here, you'll see they'll appear um, in the preview. So you can just write anything like a Google Doc or, or whatnot. Um, if you want a title, one equals sign is the biggest title. So like this, two equals signs is the next size down, and then it goes all the way up to five. So if I open the preview, you can see they get smaller. If you want bold, like um, say the sentence, a big house, you surround the word you want bold with uh, colons. If you want um, italics, it's underscores. Um, I think you can combine bold and italics with maybe two. Look at that. No, maybe not. I'm not sure about combining bold and italics, but it's not something you have to do that often. But that's, that's very basic stuff. You probably want to write some math. And the way you do that is by typing two dollar signs. If you want the math to be centered, um, put spaces between the math and the dollar signs, and if not, you want it in line, don't do that. So let me just do a basic example. So maybe sine of x equals x squared. You kind of type it out like a using this uh, caret symbol, and for instance, if I wanted an under uh, subscript, I could do that. Just kind of like basic. Um, markdown-ish, kind of, like if you're typing into Desmos, it's kind of the same syntax. But if you want it centered, if I put spaces before and after it, it'll appear like that. Um, so that's pretty nice. What if we want some variables that are longer than one letter? Like, or, or say we want to multiply this x by an a. You actually can't do that. Um, because it's it's thinking you're looking for a, one of the language variables. If you want to display that, you have to put a space between them. Let's say we wanted to write some text within this math. You can do that by just putting quotes. So you can see that'll display normally. There's a whole bunch of different math symbols um, and shorthands for them, and you can find them by going to types.app slash doc slash reference slash symbols. I recommend the, the documentation a lot. It's got all of them. Um, you can see they have a list of some of them here, but there's tons and tons of math symbols. And most of the time you can get what symbol you're looking for by just kind of guessing at the name. So say that I want an integral. You can see it just, it shows up as integral from maybe zero to infinity. Let's see, In infinity, there we go. And of sine x dx, and I'll have to do a space. And yeah, there we go, nice integral. All right, how about some general page layout stuff, just for basics. Let's say you wanna center some text, which is not quite as intuitive as it sounds. Um, like for your first homework assignment, um, to get center text, you type this hashtag, which is for kind of scripting and special language features, and then type a line, and then center. And then these square brackets here after it is where the content goes. So, like homework one. And then that would appear right there at the top. Say we want the text to show up a little bit larger. We could say at the top here, set text, and then like 16 point. And... There we go. Now, let's say we're doing some problems, like one, let a let an abelian object be defined um, 
I don't, I'm just making up nonsensical math, but let's say cal a and to the, to the j. Now this text is also big. Say we just wanted the title to be big. We can put this set text inside the align. Um, and so the text will be, the text size of 16 will be scoped to that align. So this will go back to small again. Um, let's see, and say we're doing, we're doing some kind of work here and we want the work to be centered and we want a justification also. Um, and what I mean by that is like all, oh, I'll just show you, say like, a equals 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus x, and then a equals 6 plus x, and then a equals x plus 6. This is the most basic math. I don't know why this is what I'm thinking of. We can delete these spaces here, and if I go over, you'll see this all appears in a long line, which is not ideal. Um, so what we can do is put backslashes after each of those, and that'll tell types to go on a new line. But if we wanted these equal signs to be lined up, what you can do, if you're familiar with LaTeX, this is very similar, is put ampersands in front of each of those, and that creates a breakpoint where everything will line up. So now you can see they're all in a nice area like that. Um, you've also got tons and tons of styling options in types, so let's take a look at maybe like a table. Um, that's a useful thing to be able to do. So if you type table um, and then square brackets, and then you keep typing square brackets, that'll keep giving you cells. So maybe we have day, month, year, um, and then I don't know, what, what would you put into event. I'm bad at thinking of examples on the fly, but, um, and then let's put some dummy data into this, like one, two, three. So this table doesn't look great, obviously. We'd want more columns, um, and the way you can do that is inside the table, type columns, and then let's say four. And now you can see we've got a table laid out like that. And all of the properties, you can just Google like types table documentation. And then the first link will tell you all of the properties that it can take. And there's tons of good examples in here also about how to style it. Sometimes it looks a little intimidating at first, but if you don't really know how to code, you can always copy and paste it and tweak things a little bit. That'll, that'll let you learn really quickly. And you can also just like, if you study it closely, it's everything is consistent. It's not that bad. Um, so let's do a... Oh, something something a lot of people want to do, especially new mathematicians, is have a little QED, uh, like proof solved square. So well, let's, let's say this was a proof. Say, um, make it italic proof. I don't know if the colon should be italic or not. Uh, probably should. So if this is a proof, oh shit, I wanted that to be italic, not bold. There we go. And that's our proof. And then we want to have a little QED square. You can type square, I think. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, I need to call it. Okay, that's kind of big for a QED square. So let's say width, I'd imagine, 1 EM. That's better. Um, the stroke is a little bit thick, usually. Um, it's smaller than that, so let's say stroke one point. That literally changed nothing. I wonder if I can do 0 0.5 point. Yeah, there we go, a little thinner. And I'm gonna even make this just a tiny bit smaller. That's good, but usually it's gonna be at the end. Um, so what we can do here is a line left, I guess. No, it would be right. Default is left. Put that in square brackets. And let's see, there we go. Not bad at all. Um, I can zoom in, you can see what that looks like. 
um, pretty solid. Um, let's see, there's also, there's a lot of different simple syntax to learn. That's all pretty intuitive though. Um, you can see like certain things will expand to, like this will give you the implies arrow. This will give you a squiggly arrow, just like they showed on that page. Looks pretty nice. Um, you can see these lists are auto kind of indenting like that. Um, you can also get lists by just saying plus, and that will increment the numbers for you, which is kind of nice. There's a, a ton of uh, page numbering functions too, if you want like fancy headers and stuff, like set header, heading. Um, I honestly don't use that all that much because I'm just doing like minimal math homework. Um, but if you wanted to, there's a whole world of fancy paper stuff. I think that's kind of beyond the basics. Maybe I can make a tutorial and, and learn that myself. Um, Let's see, what else is super useful? Oh, uh, variables. One thing that's really cool about types is it's also kind of a programming language. So if you're gonna, if you know you're gonna type something a lot and it's kind of inconvenient to type, like say, um, say you've got some function definition, like um, phi, which by the way, you can just type and get either capital, let's do capital phi, um, is defined from the real numbers to the natural numbers, and it equals like lambda of x and x to the fourth. I don't. This is this is nonsensical. You know what I mean? But say you had something like this, and you had to write it everywhere for some reason. And let's call it the um, the Franklin function after me. And you say hashtag let Franklin and then assign it equal to this. And this could be anything, by the way. Like for instance, um, let's call this Franklin too. This could also be just text. It could be like what you would do in quotes or you could do in square brackets, which is content. And then if I wanted to, to render that, all I would have to do is type hashtag the name of the variable. And let me do the second one too. So now these would both appear. And you can see, yep, they showed up nicely. And just to show that they're, like what the use is for this, like say that you were doing it a bunch of times, say that we had like a loop, which you can get with 4i and range, just like Python. And then brackets like that, paste it in there. And you see how I used curly brackets and not square brackets? This denotes that it, it's types is in scripting mode. So you don't actually need that hashtag. I could also just put it back in square brackets and then I would need the hashtag. So now if I go back, you can see this has appeared 10 times and maybe we want it all on a different line each time, in which case backslash. And there you go. Um, I'm trying to think, what are some other very useful, I guess a basic introduction to packages, which is a lot of what makes types to very powerful language. You can go to this website called Types Universe, and in here you can search for packages. I think there's like a way to browse, browse categories. And you can see like what top packages there are. So let me just pick like Fletcher is a classic one for, for any kind of diagrams. So all you have to do is go here, copy this line, go and paste it at the top. And if you're on a typed app, it'll actually help you search for these. I think my setup will too. So if I start typing like add preview, yeah, you can see they're all, all these suggestions come up. But anyway, so I pasted that in and then all I have to do is copy this off, paste it there, and the preview should just update. Um, looks like it did not update for some reason. That's a little weird. Um, try a refresh. I'll try quitting 
and going back in. This is just like a problem with my system sometimes. Okay, not working. I wonder what diagram. Do I have a typo or something? Hmm. Maybe there's like this package version is broken. Yeah, okay. That was a that's uh may happen from time to time. Um, but that's because a lot of this technology is new and sometimes doesn't work all that well together. But you should be able to find like GitHub issues and stuff to solve it from. But it's a good live example of how to debug that. Um, you can see people make packages for all kinds of things. Like these are diagrams, for instance. I just copied that one off and you could change it as you needed. This is kind of its own little thing to learn. There's like nodes and edges and it can take like a little while to get used to that. Um, that's kind of if you want to do really fancy stuff. If you're just typing up basic math homework, like in um, undergrad math programs, it's not all that difficult to learn. Um, let's see. That's pretty much it. I think the most important stuff to know is just read the docs. Um, anything you want to do is actually pretty clear. Um, yeah, all of this stuff is on the docs here. Yep, that's about it. Thanks for watching.